Good morning and welcome to the last of the four online sessions that we've done this year um, for pitching for the startups uh, that are part of this year's program of Bind 4.0. For, for those of you that don't know what Bind 4.0 is, you're, you, you should do because it's um, at least in Spain, I think probably um, Europe, but, but, but certainly within Southern Europe, it's one of the best if not the best um, industry focused acceleration program. So they're very focused on open innovation. They have 70 corporate partners that run uh, paid pilot schemes with deep tech um, startups. So what we're doing this year is until now, it's been very focused just on the side of the corporates and the open innovation. And this <clears> year we're, we're helping them uh, from Ionic to, um, to, to, um, extend a little bit and, and, and the side of investment, because obviously the two things are, are sides of the same coin. It, it helps if you've got more investment to build better products, which then help obviously with the with the paid pilots and, and with contracts with the corporates. So we've done, this is the fourth of the online sessions we've done. The, the next one will be live in person in Bilbao on the 6th of um, July. Uh, very recommended. I think because apart from meeting the, I think it's 19 of the 21 startups will be pitching because two of them aren't looking for investment. But but apart from apart from meeting the startups themselves, which is which is always of interest. Um, during the day, there will be a presentation of the of the pilots that they've been running with the corporates. So if if you are an investor and you're interested in in one of the startups, it's a great moment to talk to a customer that's actually been working with them and get their feedback in terms of sort of the technological and, and commercial viability of, of their solution. Um, apart from that, obviously, there's uh, everybody's very focused on, on deep tech that will be there. So, so very much recommend getting in touch if you're interested in, in coming along on the 6th of July in Bilbao. Um, and, and if you're a startup that's watching us, and you're thinking about presenting to build, uh, sorry, to bind 4.0 next year, very highly recommended. We've seen all the startups, uh, obviously, they've been running this year, and, and they've all been extremely happy with the program and, and obviously the opportunity to run commercial, paid commercial pilots uh, is never to be um, turned down. So anyway, without much ado, we'll jump into today's uh, invited investor, Raphael from Telefonica Ventures. Um, Thank you very much for being with us to, today, Raphael. Well, listen, I, I, the floor's all yours to, to tell us about Telefonica Ventures, and, and then I'll start bringing the startups on screen for the pitching. Yeah. First of all, thank you, Tom, for the invitation uh, to having me in this amazing event. Uh, to listen in the, in the first way, the, the, the companies um, want to change something in, in, in the world. So uh, first of all, I don't know, if, um, maybe everyone know about the Telefonica, but know uh, about the Telefonica Ventus, but um, Telefonica Ventus is a, a one of the Telefonica corporate venture, uh, venture capital uh, vehicle dedicated to strategy investments. Um, strategy investment because it has to, to be alignment with the strategy for the Telefonica. Uh, what what is the the strategic or the the verticals uh, important for for Telefonica? Uh, right now, we are uh, looking for the the companies more to approach to to the clean tech, fintech, and uh, logistic, and also in 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 energy. And but uh, we also has very focus in in our core business in Telefonica such as the, the networks, the communication, and the cloud and cyber security. And in terms of the, the, the valuation and the stage, uh, typically we, we are looking for the, the company has a product market fit in, in growth stage. And the, the average ticket is from to 300, 350 thousand uh, euros to to five millions always minority stakes the geographic is globally uh, but we really preference for startups in in brazil latam spain uk germany 
uh, absolute in United States and Israel as well. And about the Telefonica, uh, we are a, a corporate venture capital, so we invest directly in companies, but also we are uh, uh, invest indirectly uh, as a LPs in different uh, funds. We are uh, in, involved in in three in th sorry thirteen uh, funds around the world, uh, two in California, one in Israel, and the rest of the world. The last year we create um, in collaboration with with the 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 car funds a uh, important vehicle to to looking for the deep tech technologies uh, and in collaboration with BBDA and and Go Hub and for only tell you something for for me I am I am based in in Madrid but I am original from Alicante I am engineer of telecommunication a passionate with the, the venture capital startup innovation. I am collaboration in Juge and, and ICA speaker. So yeah, I, I think I like this this kind of the, the ecosystem and, and help the, the startup want to change uh, this, this, this world. And, and I'm just gonna add a, a, another sales pitch for, for Telefonica generally, but obviously as Telefonica Ventures in, invests in strategically uh, interesting companies for Telefonica. I think it's a plus for yourselves as well as a VC. So we've yeah. got one of our recent investments, um, Be My Vega, uh, is being um, supported commercially by Telefonica. And and uh, th these are the data he gave me that there's 1,800 salespeople out there supporting them in the day-to-day -day of their sales of the, of, of the technology. So yeah, it's, exactly. it's yeah, a huge added value um, for, for, for any company that's being, that's being invested in by telephone. Yeah, this is, Tom, this is the idea to, to, to span and to put in inside of the Telefonica and to, yeah, to span in the rest of the footprint was Telefonica has the, the operation business. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I can and and for those of the the three startups that are that are here in the in the back um, but, in but room at the also, moment. Yeah, but also Tom, uh, I mentioned only uh, overview, brief overview. It's like uh, okay, we have a, another uh, vehicle for seed company. Uh, call it uh, wider. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so yeah. We, I think we we have all this the scope for for different stages of the companies. Com completely agree. From, from an external, non-biased point of view, I, I completely agree in that respect. Luis, I'm going to bring you on screen to, to start with follow inspiration. So if you could start sharing your screen, uh, it's not your fault that you're not yet doing it because as I brought you on screen by surprise. And, uh, and then I'll add your screen and then we can start with, with your pitch. Okay. Good morning, so those, everyone. For those of, for those of you that connected, there's four minutes for pitching and then there's five minutes for, for questions. If, if you'd like to ask any questions yourselves, um, then, then feel free to do so or any comments and we'll put them on screen. Okay, I'll add yours and I'll disappear off and I'll be back in, in four minutes. Good luck. Okay, so thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I'm Luis, I'm the CEO and the, the, the founder of Follow Inspiration. Uh, Follow Inspiration is a robotics uh, producer company uh, with a proprietary technology and product capable to uh, automate the process of transportation of goods inside the factories and warehouses using always uh, autonomous mobile robots to perform this transportation in, in a completely uh, autonomous mode. Uh, with our technology and products, we typically solve problems like the lack of human resources uh, for repetitive and physically dangerous tasks, problems with the cost of work, uh, the lack of productivity and uh, flexibility. Every industry uh, faces uh, these problems uh, nowadays. Uh, well, uh, we are talking about a market that are increasing and uh, with a more and more busy warehouses and the necessity to uh, increase the production uh, because the population needs uh, the automatization is the way to respond accordingly to the society needs. The companies are investing in order to have a more disruptive 
production systems and the uh, European Union are putting a lot of effort and a lot of money to improve uh, this kind of uh, technologies um, in Europe and inside the factories to optimize these, uh, these sectors. So, follow inspiration, have a patented technology already granted in several regions uh, on the globe. And this technology, uh, it's, a, it's a technology that allow every robot to uh, navigate in a more accurate way and 100% autonomous way. Uh, we have a software uh, of uh, autonomous navigation that can be implemented in every robot using uh, mainly computer vision and IA to navigate without the necessity to use additional infra infrastructure to, uh, to operate. In a more specific view, uh, I'm sorry about the sound. In a more specific view, we have a product line of uh, autonomous robots split in two different uh, families uh, and models. The first one, it's about the autonomous uh, mobile robots, these ones. The second one, it's the autonomous forklifts capable to transport from 100 kilos until two tons of cargo, always in a 100% autonomous way and connected to our fleet management platform where we can see everything in real time about uh, the robots, communicate with them in real time and connect uh, all the actions through our platform to other platforms like SAP or MES, uh, according uh, to the to the client to the client need. This is a real operation that we are implementing uh, with the biggest retailer here in Portugal to uh, robotize the stock replacement inside the uh, the stores, the supermarkets. Uh, Additionally, we are uh, we are already uh, developing the next step of autonomous transportation, and uh, that it's the integration of robots and robotics uh, arms into our uh, industrial uh, autonomous mobile robots. And with this, we can achieve autonomous picking process and not only the transportation. We are doing this with Continental and Volkswagen here in Portugal to, um, to uh, automize the, the picking process. For example, the Volkswagen to picking the batteries and put the batteries autonomously from the pallet to inside the car. So uh, we are already in implementation, our solution with important clients in Portugal. And uh, the goal is to grow internationally, starting in Spain, French, or Germany. In Spain, we already are doing commercial approach through two programs of acceleration, the Vind uh, uh, 4.0, and in Valencia with Lanzadera, uh, part of Mercadona uh, Group. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to stop you there, Luis. To, no problem to carry at all. Yeah, just to finish. Yeah, just to finish. This year we will achieve one million in revenue, and this uh, for the next two years we already have contract signed to achieve two millions uh, in uh, 2025. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Brilliant, perfect. Okay, I'll I'll disappear off again, and I'll be back in in five minutes. Yeah, so I, Luis, I don't know if, if I, because I need, I need to, to clarify something. Yes. You know, in, in terms of the, the competition and the market, this is, I think it is uh, huge. I don't know what is really your, your value proposal and, and for you, who is your, your main competitors in, in this line? The robotics producers. We are a robotic producer. Uh, with hardware, of course, and software. The hardware, it's a common thing for us. We don't produce internally the hardware. We assemble them. We perform the design of the robots, uh, send to the factories. They produce and we assemble and put our main thing that it's the software. Okay, the intelligence that we are giving to the to the uh, to the robot. So the main competitors, it's it's the other uh, robotics producers. Okay, and. Um... I, I know uh, you are protect, no? You have uh, any patents to, to protect this kind of the, the commercialization or the build. The, okay. And, and where, where, where producer the, your robots in which uh, country you, you produce? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have two patents submitted and already granted. When, uh, all of them, uh, we are already granted in United States, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, Japan. Europe, of course, and uh, still pending in uh, Emirates. 
uh, we produce uh, in Portugal. We are based in Portugal, uh, yeah. in Oporto, uh, and we produce typically the, um, the autonomous mobile robots, the red ones here. Uh, around us, with with uh, with uh, with the factories, uh, and the forklifts we produce in China. Okay, understood. Um, in terms of the go-to market, what what is the typical company uh, focus or ideal company uh, in terms of the the size? No, or the the you think is the the best option to use your your product. Typically, uh, we we sell uh, to companies with a lot of um, cadency, a lot of production internally, automotive mm -hmm. sector, the tier one, tier two, and tier three of the automotive sectors, plastics, chemicals, for example, cork. Nowadays, in Portugal, it's a huge sector are purchasing as uh, autonomous forklifts, for example. Uh, the retailers uh, are. Um, asking us a lot for uh, for this kind of of solutions because they they don't have human resources to to perform the stock uh, replacement uh, during the night inside the store so they they are using us to to robotize and auto, uh, automize this kind of process and even in the e-commerce part uh, in the warehouses uh, where are performing uh, e-commerce things and picking um, they are using this kind of robots to transport everything and leave the the physical efforts that the, the um, that the uh, the humans and the persons typically uh, need to do to to perform these tasks. But it's typically companies with a lot of cadency, a lot of production, and a lot of square meters to uh, to face and to transport. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think uh, people in the audience ask something, but that question for me is like, uh, uh, is this is the your first company you you built? It's my first company. Yeah. Okay, understood. But we uh, we create Fall Inspiration in 2012, so we already have uh, 11 years, so with a completely scalable product. Okay, understood. And, and as Raphael said, there is a question from the audience, so so. Yeah. Um, if you can read it out on screen and, and answer, that would be fantastic. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, well, uh, it's contracts already signed because we um, it's it's uh, our client submit a uh, uh, public rent uh, from the typical European uh, funds and so on, and they contract us through these uh, European funds to uh, implement in the in the in their stores. So, um, so it's uh, it's impl we we are we are right now producing the robots to implement um, in 2023 and in 2024 and beginning of 2025. Okay, uh, this is uh, this project uh, give us more than one million, and we are ready uh, another one uh, the pipeline uh, nowadays in accordingly with five six million. Uh, with leads and the proposal submitted, and we we will achieve, of course, more uh, more uh, more leads. I don't know if I, if I answered the the the, the question. So, sort of, sort of. He then asked about defensibility, but we'll we'll jump to the we'll jump to the to the next one. Manuel uh, from Nline is now connected. I can't see that he started his camera, so I'll I'll bring him on screen. Thank you very much, uh, Luis. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, sorry, and I, I cut you off. I didn't mean to. My apologies. And and I'll bring on Manuel. Manuel, if you could start staring, sharing your screen, then then I'll add it to the, yeah. to the screen. And, and for the rest good, of good you, morning. can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly. So so um, anybody else feels like answering, asking a question, feel free to do so. Okay, we've now got your screen. So I will disappear off, and I'll be back in four minutes. Good luck. Okay. Can, can you see, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, good morning. My name is Manuel Lemos. I'm CEO and co-founder of Enline. Um, and uh, welcome to the revolution of the uh, energy sector. We are bringing uh, advanced mathematics and physics um, to change the way we create digital twins. We don't need any more 
sensors and um, and uh, hardware. Uh, this is a completely different process where we use only internet and data to build very detailed uh, digital twins using physics and mathematics. And with this process, we don't need sensors. Basically, it's very fast to implement. It's a proven technology. We have already customers in fi on five continents. We have a lot of predictive analytics using AI. And and uh, and um, and we, we are uh, really a net zero carbon emission technology. No sensors, no hardware, no need of travels, no need of face-to-face -face meetings. All the process is through the internet. We can also reduce losses to 30% and is unbeatable in terms of price, reliability, speed to implement, and impact in the environment. We can talk uh, later about this. We are in the entire process of from generation of energy, transmission, distribution, and high consumption, okay? We work in real time, predictive analytics, dynamic line rating, losses reduction, fault location, even for wildfire prevention, optimization of engineering, risk management, vegetation and landslide management, all using advanced modeling, computational modeling using physics and mathematics. Okay, this is really the, 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 the big change. We have five softwares, all software as a service models. We have big impact from OPEX costs to APEX to CAPEX uh, costs, losses reduction, speed to implement more than 2,000 kilometers per day of lines. And this, this is really generating value to our customers. Our customers are from uh, TSOs and DSOs, power generation companies, smart cities and critical infrastructures, assets, mining companies and industrial companies, uh, electromobility and railways, up to risk management. We are in the entire cycle cycle of energy. Okay, the market is very big, and we are growing with, with the market also. We have currently customers. This is the process of the last three years of sales. We are in in five continents, growing using our offices in Portugal, Germany, Brazil, and Peru. The team is uh, this one. Uh, we we have uh, four members at the management board. And we have more than 25 engineers specialized PhDs and masters in, in different areas. Uh, in terms of shareholder structures, we the founders still with near 70%. We have some VC investor in also Kik Inno Energy from the European Union. Uh, our sales are, have been growing fast, uh, especially after COVID. And we expect for this year to be above 1.5 million. Currently, we already have secured that value at mid of the year. Probably we're going to come to 2 or 2.5 this year. And this is a fast resume of our company. Thank you very much. And I, I will be um, uh, open for your questions. Thank you very much. Brilliant, Manuel. Uh, perfectly timed. So, so I'll take off your screen now and, and you've got five minutes for questions, Rafael. Again, if anybody from the audience wants to launch a question, we're very <clears throat> happy to incorporate it into the conversation. Yeah, so, Manuel, yeah, Manuel, first of all, congratulations for, for the explanation and the clarification about the company. Um, you know, I think right now the, the clean tech is a really hype for for all uh, uh, founders and and the market is is emerged no or more more people are looking for the 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 impact no I, I don't know in terms because uh, uh, your company really performs very well uh, currently you are looking for the, the fundraising or business what yeah. are really you're, because I think your company is growth very very well. I don't know if you have also operation because you comment uh, your company is globally, but I don't know if you have uh, uh, agreements with the local uh, resellers or you have operation in different countries. Explain me about the the what you, uh, really you are looking for and about the operations. Very good, and, and uh, thank you very much, Rafael. Um, First of all, we are now very advanced in the CDA uh, okay. to raise uh, um, approximately 4 million euros with uh, La Caixa and Santander from Spain. Cool. Um, and this is a question of uh, very few weeks, let's say, to, to be closer. This is very advanced. Um, then second about operations, 
we, we, we have small offices in these regions where I show it, Germany, Portugal, Peru, and Brazil. But yeah. 97, 98% of the team works remotely. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. We, we, we work remotely. Uh, currently, we receive an invitation from Plug and Play to establish our company in, the, in Silicon Valley. We went there two weeks ago to the Plug and Play Summit. And we are thinking to move our management team to Silicon Valley, at least to, to try a part of the team, at least two members. We already spoke about that. But in terms of operations, we're going to keep the structure, especially in, in Brazil and Peru, for the costs of people. You, you, it's, it's much easier to find qualified people for lower costs. And then the sales and management will, will be between um, Europe and U.S., in US because it's really the number one market for for our technology. I think you the company have a, a real match with with our business in in Telefonica. I don't know if you speak with somebody in Telefonica or never. It's getting yeah. Could you, could, could you hear me? Manuel, I think you are frozen. Yeah, I think his connections I think his connections gone. Um yeah, Manuel, if you well, if you come back, uh, more interesting I, company, I think. Yeah, well, it's 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 you can just see just looking at the slides, you can. Oh, okay, he's disappeared. All right, well, we'll jump, we'll jump to the. To, but you can just see from the slides that there's a fit. Okay, wait a second, he's back. Let me see if he's. Let's see if he's. Hello, Manuel, can you hear us or not? Yeah, I think that. Um... The, the Wi-Fi in the hotel I am now failed, but I came in the in the phone. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Well, I'll leave Rafael just to make his last comment because Sorry, I think Rafael. it was an interest you, and then I'll and then I'll come back in. Yeah, Rafael. yeah, yeah. Only yeah, it's only the, the question is about the the. I really think uh, we have a a, a match with uh, your company, but I don't know if you are conversation or start conversation with, with Telefonica group or with somebody, I don't know. Or Telefonica, I, I use Telefonica in Peru because it's my grid operator. Okay. When I go to Peru, uh, I'm your customer, let's say. But for these kinds of uh, things, uh, ventures is the first time we are speaking with someone from Telefonica. Okay, understood. But I think Thomas has a great, a great question about the how is the time of the implementation of the your solution? Yeah, the implementation can take uh, days, few days, okay, less than one week, if we have all the data, uh, or even one day. We have some cases where we implemented in twenty four hours for a critical case in a in a fault location, but this is very fast. It's a question of few days, few weeks in in, in maximum. And in terms of the competition, the competitors, who is there Com really? We have no, we have no competitors at this level of sensorless. All of them are using sensors, different kind of sensor in conductors or cameras or uh, lidars, etc. But with this approach of advanced, let's say mathematics and, and il finite modeling, you no know, elements, you no know, elementos finitos, finite elements. We are the very single one uh, right now. I don't know if someone is 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 developing this but up to now we don't see other company at this level we know other companies like plexigrid doing uh, things of power flow but far very far away from what we are doing in terms of the, let's say uh, the granulatory uh, granulometry and detail they, they they don't do the fault location now we do they don't reduce loss they just calculate power flow no? Energy coming, energy exit, and, and very general. But uh, I, I, we believe that in the future, companies will 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 bring technologies. The, the market is so big. Only to give an idea, in terms of market, in the next seven years, we will need to build almost the same extension of transmission lines we have uh, now. We have 100 million kilometers in the world, and then in the next, let's say, 10 years, because this article was from from um, some some years ago. Uh, but in seven years, more or less, we need to to double, and the investment is huge. And why? Because renewables are making a big pressure in the system, 
electromobility, the, the electrical, uh, the uh, distributed energy sources, transmission lines are not prepared for this, and we need to really to focus on, on lines. There are many studies about investments, and is is one of the biggest markets uh, now in the energy field is trans are transmission lines. No? Brilliant, Ma Manuel. I'm going to have to cut you off there because we're sorry, 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 sorry. No, no, not no problem. But with the technical problems as well, we sort of we sort of jumped over time. Very well, very well, so, very well. Mitchell, I'll, I'll if you could start sharing your screen and then I'll bring you online. Okay, thank, thank you very much, much, guys. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. And and I'll bring on Mitchell here. Uh, and Mitchell, if you could just start sharing your screen. Yes. Oh, somebody, and somebody had just launched a question. Uh, so, <laughs> so Manuel. If you can answer them on the um, on on the event in in LinkedIn, then then they can get the answer. It doesn't tell us who it is, but there must be a third level connection or something of mine. So so Mitchell, have you you have started sharing screen? Thank you. Okay, and so, so I will I will disappear off and I'll be back in four minutes. Okay, can you see my screen? We can, we can. Okay, great. So. Hello, my name is uh, Michal. Uh, I'm uh, the member of the board of Army Magnetics, and I want to present you uh, something unique. Uh, and it's the smallest sensor of physical quantities in the world. We call it microwire. Uh, on the screen, you can see the real size of the sensor in, in, in my calling hands. It's it's smaller than a human hair. But so, some uh, basic information uh, about the market and about uh, our potential. Uh, what we are doing, we are trying to provide the data from and collect the data from very challenging environments. We are focused on, on markets where, where all other sensors like the strangle, these thermocouples or G sensors fail. Uh, we are we have the position on, on a sensors market or micro sensors market, which is uh, which has a very nice uh, numbers and two digit growth. But the drivers of, of the whole uh, uh, sensors market are different. It's the industrial IoT market and the AI market, which is much more huge and has really nice uh, ratio, uh, ratios of growth. Uh, so what we have, we have the sensor, which could you implement on your device or embed it into the almost any device and measure the physical quantities which temperature, vibration, position, mechanical stress, and all other quantities like the torque, position, linear motion. It's our own technology, uh, patented technology. We, we had uh, two patents uh, from last year, uh, and it's developed by, by us. Uh, we have the, a lot of clients from differ, different uh, industries. We can call it industrial IoT or industrial 4.0 industry where all our, our clients need to measure something what wasn't able to measure before. Uh, we are uh, focused on two, seg uh, two segments or two, two industries. It's the, the electric engines and the composite materials. But as, as you can see, we have a lot of clients also from, from the assembly industry, from the battery industry. Uh, we have right now eight paying clients from Fortune 500, or uh, especially from, from Fortune 500 Global uh, uh, ranking. And uh, on top of it, 40 plus paying clients, which are smaller than these Fortune uh, 500 uh, companies. Uh, if we are talking about the numbers, uh, in this year, we, uh, in our revenue, we will be very close to 1 million uh, euros. Last year, it was over 600 thousand euros. Uh, if I compare our sensors with other sensors, yes, there is a lot of sensors, uh, string, gogies, thermocouples. But if, if you create that funeral, then you need to contactless sensors, very small, uh, which survive very harsh conditions. There is no such technology as, as a microvirus from RV magnetics. So a few words about the company. Uh, we are based in uh, Slovakia, in Košice. 23 people right now, 16 of them in a, in a technical team. Most of them has the PhD from the microvirus, but from different uh, point of view, from the chemicals, from magnetism, from the, from the physics. The whole company is managed and led by a professor Varga, who is a very known scientific person in, in a field of the sensing and the magnetism in, in, in a world. A lot of publications and a lot of citations. 
The technical team is led by uh, a very experienced uh, manager, uh, Mr. Marhevka, with seven, 17 plus years experience in, in managing the, the, the companies. Uh, what we are looking for? We are looking for, for the investment in a Series A, so uh, minimally 3.5 million, which we want to use for for growing to 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 grow, and this is the time probably. Am I right? You're brilliant. Yes, yes, you've run, yeah, so you've run out of time. Three point five million. We are looking for minimum. That, that's that's it. right. <laughs> if you want to flick through the, there you go. You flick through the other slides, then they can, then you can just see. Just before Raphael, just before you 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 jump in with your questions, um, Tomas, uh, thank you, Tomas. Keep the questions rolling. It's always useful. Um, uh, makes a, a quick question. So if you could answer this, Michal, and then. Um, and then, and then Raphael will jump in with his questions. So, so where where do you not apply the sensor, and and why not? Okay, uh, we can we we are not able to have the the signal through the ten centimeters of magnetic material. So, so, so we can have the signal through the one centimeter depth metallic or magnetic material, but through the ten centimeters, no. Uh, we are we are not trying to compete with the uh, standard uh, sensors like the thermocouples. If you want to measure the temperature in your room, you you can buy the Chinese thermocouple for a few cents, and that's it. Uh, but if you want to measure measure the temperature from the human body or from the inner parts of the electric engines uh, uh, without the cables, contactlessly, there is no other technology. So, so yes, uh, there is a, a lot of uh, applications where we are not. Okay, we could have the signals and we could, we could measure the, the value, but why to do it if, if you have uh, proved cheaper and standard sensors or, or, or technologies? So, so we are much more focused on, on very uh, harsh conditions or harsh environment conditions. And, and that was his second question. So what, what, what are the most common use cases at the moment? What, what, what do most of your customers do? Uh, as I mentioned, the electric engines, so, so, so the, as an encoder for, for the position, the temperature or the vibration of the, of the engines, this is the, the, the let's say 35-40% uh, of, of our turnover of the customers. The, the same size group is the comp uh, are the composites, uh, the rubber composites or the carbon fiber composites, uh, small the glass composites, but still still all, all these two, two groups is around 75-80% of our, our customers. And the rest of them is from the civil engineering. Some some of them from are from the uh, medtech industry. Okay, all right. With that, Raphael, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's all yours. And I'll be back in three and a half minutes or left. <laughs> Michael, thank you for for the time and explanation. <clears throat> um, you comment the you has a uh, two focus to to the possible clients. But what is the, the strategy for to go to market? You using their sellers, you are using the normal uh, mm -hmm. key account manager. Okay. Uh, we have that the lucky that we we have higher demand than, than we can can supply right now. So that, that's the reason why we are trying to, to, to have the investment to create create bigger technical team to deliver much more more projects for, for, for our clients. So, so at the at the end, we are much more focused on early adopters of, of the technology, the clients which adopt absolutely new physics of the sensors and, and, and be be that partners which implement the technology in their products and put it on, on, on the market. So, so we have the clients which are from the the sensors industry. That they, they are big or bigger companies, and uh, this is also our let's say the the evangelist. Yes, we uh, we can have have a uh, few, few sales guys and we ha we have it but it's mainly about it's it's not the standardized solution which you when you have the catalog and offer the, the, the standard sensors yeah this is this is for it this is my question because i think the, when you try to uh, try to to sell the deep tech technologies more complicated to explanation no? but for the reason is what is your your strategy to to sell this product because yeah if you want to scale uh, the revenues, yeah, you have to to to. Uh, 
the, the, the okay uh, I, I will try to explain you on on, uh, on uh, the, the real example from our client it's, it's the client which is the tier one uh, automotive supplier which need to me me measure in a special way the torque on a, on a shaft for the electric engine uh, in we we are in the last phase of, of the prototypization and at the end they will implement it into the all new series of, of the shafts in a volume 200,000 shafts uh, per year in 2025 slash 2026. So, so we standardly do it exclusively for, for, for the clients for each shaft or for each applications. And this type of the partners are the are our evangelists, let's say. How, how many, how, how many uh, passive sensors do you have in the market, approximately? Uh, we are able to produce 100,000 sensors uh, during the five, uh, during the 15 minutes from one gram of metal. So that, that's the, the production uh, capacity. Right now, we, we are finishing the, the few uh, prototyping uh, phases with the clients. And of, in 2025, at, at the beginning of 2025, we are starting with the, the first mass production uh, stage. Uh, it will be in a few tens of thousands. In a 2025, in a, in a 2026 slash uh, seven, it will be close to to million pieces. Brilliant! Thank you very much, Michal. Uh, we'll we'll now welcome. bring on Ekrem from from Sensemore. So Ekrem, if you could start sharing your screen, please, and and then I'll add it to the I'll add it to the stream. Brilliant. Very smoothly, very smoothly done. Okay, good luck, Ekram. I'll be back in four minutes. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Ekram from Sensmore. Uh, I'm responsible for investment processes and investor relations. Uh, Sensmore basically is a deep tech company that focuses on machine health analysis. First of all, unhealthy machines start to increase their energy consumption, then it starts to damage other mechanisms, at the last point, it becomes inoperable and causes unexpected production downtimes. The financial equivalent of this problem is millions of dollars for a manufacturer. In addition to financial cost, there is a significant problem in the industry in terms of environment and sustainability. Uh, only industry operations are responsible for 30% of global carbon emissions. This shows that Industrial companies cannot reach their net zero targets without achieving healthy machines. Uh, to solve these big problems, we offer an AI-backed technology to predict and prevent machine malfunctions by providing an end-to-end -end solution, and this solution identifies root causes months in advance. Our solution consists of three main elements. The first one is the data acquisition devices to collect high quality data. The second layer is the data-driven asset management platform to manage high scale data, also visualization and monitoring. Uh, the third part is our main focus, the machine health AI analysis system, what makes, us, makes our solution scalable. Based on our client data, SenseMore, helps our users to achieve 90% less downtime, 20% longer machine life, 25% decrease in maintenance cost together with 15% reduced energy consumption. Uh, to visualize the process, as the first stage of our solution process, our specialists perform an online site analysis in order to understand and observe the facility and the maintenance strategy is already in use. Then the solution best fitting for customer needs is chosen among our different solution modules. Uh, then the data is collected and uploaded to our platform. According to the analysis conducted by AI, health report, machine health report is generated to inform the user. In case of a malfunction detection, our reliability engineers contact the maintenance engineers uh, and explain the problem and the required actions. The maintenance team performs the controls and provide feedbacks on our platform. Our reliability engineers always keep close contact uh, to maintenance personnel in order to increase the adaption 
and support cultural change in our customer. Here is a case study, mini case study from uh, biggest cement company in Turkey. Uh, it shows the effectiveness of our solution very well. Our AI predicted a failure and alerted the maintenance team with a machine health report. And the first signs of future failure were approved by our user and prevented from an unexpected downtime. Under our surveillance, there is no unexpected downtime occurred. And according to the customer data, they said six days of possible downtime. They prevented 40,000 cubic meters of natural gas consumption, 10 to 15% lower carbon emissions in monitored, monitored equipments, and the ROI was 100x in just three months. Now we are in the scaling phase with this customer, and we are working with Turkey's biggest telecommunication company for network infra infrastructure and partnership. Uh, we have three co-founders with uh, expertise in machine dynamics, business development, and AI. Now we have 18 full-time employees currently. Uh, I'm going to cut, I'm gonna cut you off there, Ekrem. Um, yeah, this uh, is the last page, by the way. We, okay, uh, go on. Yeah, as I mentioned in the case study, our most effective partner is the biggest telecommunication company in Turkey. Uh, with our experience with them, I would like to mention our collaboration opportunities with our guest investor, Telefonica. Uh, first, industrial companies need network structure in our high-scale projects. Uh, second, Telefonica can be a significant sales channel partner of Sensemore, uh, and this leads adding new product segments into their product portfolio. Lastly, Sensemore can reach new customers, partners, and also potential investors who are in Telefonica's extensive business network. Thank you for your time and all interest. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm glad to answer them. B brilliantly done, Ekrem, and lovely to see there the personalization of the pitch for, for Raphael. Okay, I'll disappear off and I'll be back in five minutes. Sure. Yeah, amazing, amazing Ekrem, and thank you for the, yeah. The, the a little explanation about the, the the how you can use the technology in Telefonica. The, I, I don't know if you can explain a little more about the business model because I think you don't. Oh, I forget. Sorry, the business uh -huh. model of the about the the company. Could you explain a little more? Yeah. Because I don't know if it's license or is a a services or consultancy. <laughs> uh, sure, we have three different business models actually. Uh, first one is, uh, as I said in the whole process, end-to-end value proposition together with the hardware, software, and AI. The second business model is uh, providing white-label licensing in relatively narrow markets, such as marine or defense industries. Uh, we give uh, white-label licensing both our hardware and software. Three, uh, the third one is the most exciting one, actually. Uh, we are in the test field test processes with uh, world's biggest machinery equipment producers, OEMs, and uh, we are trying to combine our solution to create a built-in uh, machine health solutions with the machines. Understood, clear. Uh, how, many, how many people are in, in your company? Yeah, we are in 18 people right now. 18 people. Yeah. Okay, and you have any clients in different country or what is your mainly uh, focus country to, sure. to, to deploy the, your solution? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, we have more than 60 corporate customers in 17 countries right now. And we are started to, we are getting new customers uh, and our actually go-to-market strategy, our focus market is European market. Uh, we are targeting to make Europe our main market in relatively, uh, like in the long run, actually. Uh, our focus industries actually for uh, cement, uh, uh, as I mentioned in our case study, also pharma, FMCG, and iron and steel are focus customer segments. And we are targeting, as you uh, guess, 
medium and large industrial players. Okay, Tomás has a question, I think about the, the, the semen industry case. It's like, I don't know if you can see. <laughs> yeah, Is I can it? see. Okay. Uh, our case study uh, took three months actually, but uh, in some problems, in some malfunctions, we can detect immediately, but in some uh, default malfunction types, we need train algorithm. So uh, we can detect malfunctions immediately, some malfunctions, we can need train our algorithm in some malfunctions, uh, but this is not longer than one or two months. Perfect. Th thanks for thanks for that, uh, Ekrem. So, um, so I'll 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 jump to the to the um, last uh, startup. So we've got. Yeah, sure. Um, Thank you for the opportunity. No, not at all. Thank you very much for for being Thank with you us. Sir. See you. Thank you. Bye bye. And then I'll jump into Nicholas from Inomi. Uh, here we go. So Nicholas, if you could start sharing your your screen, and then and then I'll get. Hello. Can you me. can you see my screen and hear me properly? Uh, I can now Is see you now? brilliantly. Yeah. Thank you again. Very smooth. I'll Perfect. be back. I'll disappear off. I'll be back in four minutes. <laughs> okay. Hello. I'm Nicolás from Inomi. We are a young company created by a group of Argentinian scientists. As Argentinians, we love meat. It is a key element of our culture. However, we know that meat production is taking the planet into a critical situation. At the same time, meat consumption is growing and growing every year, and this is no longer sustainable. As Argentinians and meat lovers, this hurts us deeply, but also encourages us to find a solution. Currently, the market offers us two options that are not good enough. On one hand, we have plant-based meat, which is full of ingredients. Ingredients that are non-sustainable, ingredients that are non-healthy, ingredients that are heavily processed. On the other hand, we have cell-based meat, which is poor micronutrients, genetically modified, and extremely expensive. So, how can we enjoy the benefits of meat without harming the planet or compromising our health with insufficient options? Luckily, Inom is here to offer you a third way, the right way, fungi-based meat. We can deliver the experience of consuming juicy meat with an exceptional product that combines high protein content, low environment impact, and the nutritional benefits of mushrooms. How can we do this? Our mushroom grows real tissues that replicate the animal muscle. For that reason, we don't need a long list of ingredients in order to build and keep the meat texture. Our product builds its own texture. We understand now why fungi-based meat could be better than other alternatives. But why Inomi? The answer is simple, because of our solid state fermentation. Most companies use liquid state fermentation, which requires huge and expensive bioreactors. They also require a huge energy consumption and take two weeks on average to obtain similar products than ours. Our solid state fermentation can be held in any food production facility using its existing equipment. All of this with a low energy consumption and in less than one week. Our business model is a B2B one in which we develop innovative products and license the technology and the know-how to food production companies. We provide them our knowledge, our Coca-Cola formula, and they manufacture the products and take them to the final consumer. The most important asset that we have is our exceptional team, especially one of our founders, Francisco Cujar, who is a PhD in biology and one of the world's foremost experts in solid state fermentation. So we would like you to join us in one of the toughest challenges that our generation will face, which is 
to replace and reinvent meat consumption. Join the third way, the right way, fungi-based meat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicolas. Well, Raphael, it's it's a little bit of a jump from telecommunications to to fungi-based meat, but obviously this is a this is a worldwide problem, uh, made worse given the current circumstances. So I'll I'll leave you on screen for questions, and Tomas, feel free to fire away. Uh, I'll be back in five minutes. Okay. Nicolas, in my case, uh, only tell you thanks for the explanation, but it, it, I am not familiarized uh, about the food tech, but yeah, I think yeah, you have a, a good opportunity and, and a good product, but yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, fire, I'll fire away with a quick question. In, in terms of traction levels, um, so you, you mentioned that you're a B2B um, sales, but you haven't mentioned the, the, the customer base uh, level of traction, historic traction, current levels. If you could talk us through that a little bit. Of course. In the at this moment, we are in a in a phase of validating the actual scalability of our of our products. We have uh, many MVPs already um, ready to to be sold, and we are testing the scalability in actual uh, industrial conditions. Since in our lab. It happens. Uh, uh, we we make it perfectly and properly, but we need to 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 prove that the same um, that the same fermentation process can be held uh, in in actual facilities. That's the um, the project that we are doing in this uh, buying 4.0 program together with Mondragon Group, um, and we also have some customers in in France in. In Belgium and and in other in some regions of, of Spain, for for which we are making customized products in order to make a larger um, commercial agreements uh, in the future. With every client that we work, we have to to get through a phase of uh, of R and D and get exactly the the product that they want. We have a burger like a. Uh, our base burger, but they want more spicy, more crunchy, etc. So we need to make some R&D efforts. We we got some revenue for that, and then uh, if everything is okay and we can scale in their plants, we make some commercial agreements for the future. We are still in the first phase. Um, I hope that that answers your question. And and I'm sorry, Rafael, that I I know that this. That the, no, the Forca Ventures is, is not uh, not in the food tech world, but but, but, it, 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 but that does that does bring me to to a quick question in terms of sort of investors. So obviously, uh, everybody involved in climate tech uh, and food tech um, uh, are, are potential investors. But I, I was just wondering about defence, and I know this might seem a a, a, a huge jump, but. I'm wondering how how small you can actually create a solid state fermentation plant. So, you know, if, if you were able to create a container size solid state fermentation plant and put that on the front lines of Ukraine and provide meat based products in a week to soldiers on the front, I could imagine that would be rather interesting in the current context. Of but, course, but, uh, the only thing that we need uh, is a, a, a room in which the temperature does not uh, vary a lot because a, a huge variation kills the mushroom and, and also the um, a, a place in which in the critical moment, which is the, um, the, the inoculation of the, of the substrate, uh, that must uh, be done in... In, um, in clean, in very clean conditions. That's all we need. And we need, of course, to provide inoculum, which is the, the our Coca-Cola formula that I that I mentioned to the to Ukraine. But that could be made in our lab here in Bilbao, transported to Ukraine, and in a very simple facility that, that can be done. 
Well, that, that's what that's what I was thinking. I didn't know how large they had to be, but it just came to it made me think that maybe there was a, the solution because obviously defense is, you know, I know NATO have just launched a 50 million a year line of non non dilutive um, financing for defense companies. Anyway, it just just an idea, something we can talk about in Bilbao on the 6th of July. Tomas hasn't failed us and, and he's made uh, a, a couple of questions here. In terms of the market focus, uh, you mentioned Argentina, but as I know, you're you're in Bilbao, and then yes. and the DRL level, and then the uh, the defensibility in terms of copycat. So if you okay, I I'll, I'll, I'll try to be to answer shortly. Uh, yeah. First of all, the uh, market uh, we, we are from Argentina, but based in Bilbao, and our idea is to use uh, Bilbao and the Basque Country as a platform to to jump to to the world. We've been working in the last two years with European companies, but uh, we have to face some um, regulatory issues uh, because of the novel food and, and that kind of, uh, of bureaucratic um, steps that we must, that we must um, get through. So we are looking at different markets like US and Singapore. Singapore, I would say that is the, the market to focus because they are actively looking uh, for new sources of protein and, and that's a perfect mas- match for us about trl uh, we are between four and five uh, in the in the way to to be uh, clear five to six uh, since we are testing our our product and our um, fermentation process in in current uh, real and significant conditions and about the, the Coca-Cola sauce, our inoculum, the way to prevent copycats is that we never disclose how to how we do it. According to our, I, I'm the finance guy, so I can't assure you this by myself. But according to our our R and D guys, it's extremely difficult to make a reverse engineering about our inoculum. And in the remote case that someone finds out how we we make it. Um, it's extremely difficult to stabilize it. The inoculum, the regular inoculum, let's call it, uh, lasts for six hours. In six hours, the mushroom is dead, so it doesn't uh, work anymore. Our inoculum uh, can live for two weeks, so you can transport it uh, uh, wherever you, you want. And the, the way how we protect it is by industrial secret. We will never disclose how we do it. That is in, done in our, in our facilities. And the fermentation process using inoculum as the main uh, raw material, we can disclose that um, because it has to be made in the client facility. I hope that that answer your question, Thomas. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well, well, we'll call it to an end now. I'll just bring Luis and Michael back on screen because they're here. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for, for taking part today. Um, thank you, Tomas. Pity we can't bring you on screen because you've played as much of a part of this as, as the rest of us. And, and just for those that are still watching, uh, please remember 6th of July um, in Bilbao. If you are an investor and you're interested in coming, then please reach out. And, and for those startups that are connected, well, you know, you know where to sign up for next year's um, Buying 4.0 program. So, so, guys, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Rafael. And, uh, and, and the three of you, well, Raphael, I'm not sure if I'll see you in Bilbao, but I'll certainly see the other three of them in Bilbao and, and, and hopefully sure. we'll see you or, or if not online uh, whilst we're there. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Congratulations.